Dave and Jenny Mars knew they wanted to adopt, but little did they expect the faith, perseverance, and determination that it would take to get their daughter, Sylvie, home. On this special episode of Downtown Now, you'll hear the links Dave and Jenny went to build a loving home for their adopted daughter and learn how you can help foster children in our city. In 2012, Sammy Laney lost her best friend Deborah to suicide. Deborah had been a foster child, and after the loss of her friend, Sammy felt called to provide love and support to local children entering the foster care system through her nonprofit, named after her best friend, The Deb Project. Hello, my name is Sammy Laney. I am the executive director and founder of The Deb Project deserving, enriched, and blessed. The Deb Project started in 2012 when I lost my girlfriend Deborah to suicide. We were best friends growing up. Uh, she was adopted when I was in third grade. Uh, she came to my house and we hung out and we played together and went to school together and we were just best friends until March 2012 when she took her life. And I had no idea until that day um, that her life was different and foster care children's lives are different. Um, and that's what um, inspired me to make a difference and um, to change some lives for foster in the foster care community. So anytime a foster child comes into care, that foster parent can come in and we offer anything on our retail floor. So they get five tops, five bottoms, or five outfits, pajamas, anything seasonal. So if they need a coat, they get a coat. Um, pajamas, um, whether it's short pajamas or long pajamas, swimsuit, shoes, anything on our retail floor. Then we have two pantries. We have a food pantry and a hygiene pantry. In the hygiene pantry, we have anything from socks and underwear to soap and toothpaste and toothbrush. And those pantries need to be filled all the time for those kiddos. I believe that the Deb Project impacts the foster care community in such a way that our foster care parents come in, they feel at ease to talk with us and speak with us, and they know that they're going to get the love and care that they need. Just, um, just knowing that we have the items available We would love for people to come in and support us. Uh, we need all the help that we can get. Um, we have a retail store that people can come shop. We have volunteer program. Uh, we're all volunteers. Nobody up here uh, gets a paycheck. We want to put 100% of all the profits that we um, get off of our retail floor right back into our community, to our foster care community. If you don't have time to volunteer, come shop. Um, if you don't want to shop, donate. Uh, clean out your closets, donate. We love that. Um, if you want to organize a group uh, to help, um, Sunday school classes, Girl Scouts, uh, anybody can organize a group um, to help and they do donation drives. We greatly appreciate all of that. We were introduced to Dave and Jenny Mars through their work to support the Deb Project and local children in the foster care system. And we wanted to share their story with you today. A story that started before their HGTV show, Fixer to Fabulous. Before they had a home filled with five beautiful children. It's a story of perseverance and love, faith and determination, and love that stretched miles, crossed borders, and overcame obstacles to build a home for a child in need. Jenny and Dave Mars, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you. I want to talk to you guys about family and faith and adoption and building a home. Yeah. Not the way I think a lot of times you talk about building a home, right. but actually building a home for a family yeah. and creating that family. And 
we're just going to dive right in. Before your TV show, Fixer uh -huh. to Fabulous, before yep. you had five beautiful children, <laughs> we're going to go to 2008. Okay. And you decided okay. to start exploring adoption uh -huh. as you're dealing with some infertility issues. Mm -hmm. So life happens when you're making plans. Right. right? Yes. So you're exploring adoption and yeah. then you discover you're pregnant with Nathan and Ben yes. in 2009. So your yes. family then grew by twins. Yes. 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 <laughs> so that's a whole thing to yes. explore. <laughs> but while you're doing that, you're still searching for a child to adopt. Yeah, um, well, we had paused our adoption our, and we were trying to survive the first year with twins. So there was no, <laughs> it was just survival mode. But um, we had, plan you know, we had done so much research and learned mm -hmm. so much about the global orphan crisis is kind of was like, I don't know, we were just overwhelmed by all of the need in the world and in, in, the, in the U.S. as well. And like we were like this, we just really were convinced that that was still part of our path and our way we would build our family eventually, but we kind of took a break of thinking about it or planning for it for a little while, like a year and a half, I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, boys... you weren't busy with twins. No, right? I know. It was, it was... It was so much with the yeah. twins. Um, yeah. Like, I mean, I think now, like whenever we see, you know, young parents or parents with twins, just to go up and say, it'll be okay. Yeah. You'll make it. I, I know you don't think you will, but you'll make yeah. it. And um, we were lucky that we had twins you know, before we had a, a single child because... We didn't know any different. Yeah. We didn't know any different. Yeah, it was a hard year, but so good. Like, they were so fun and they, yeah, it was, it was good, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm gonna jump ahead to 2012. Okay. okay. And you're searching through profiles mm -hmm. of, of potential children to uh -huh. adopt. And I read that you came across Sylvie and immediately knew this was our girl. Mm -hmm. I yeah. just, I love that. <laughs> um, can you just explain that moment? Well, we had actually been, um, we really weren't searching at that point. We were on a waiting list. Um, we had gone through the whole process with our agency to get on a waiting list to adopt from Ethiopia. So we were on the list and we were just kind of waiting and it was just a, really a matter of time at that point. But um, I was, I got an email from an agency that has um, kids that aren't, that weren't placed basically. So anyway, she was on that email and I, yeah, I just knew. I, I and I and I never it wasn't like I got these all the time and I was like, oh, this one, this you know, it wasn't that at all. It was like, oh wow, this is our daughter. And so I called Dave and um, we met. Like he knew something was up because I was like, I need to, we need to meet right now. So we got together and called the agency and realized we'd have to basically forfeit our other place, our other you know, um, we were on the wait list and all of the time and money and paperwork that we'd already done we would have to kind of start all over because yep. we would be switching agencies, switching country programs. Um, so it took us a couple days to really finalize, like this is definitely the path we're gonna go down, but we just knew something was calling us to her, so. Yeah, and yeah. we, at first we didn't, like we didn't know the country that Sylvie was was. Yeah, they don't from. list any of that. They yeah. don't list any of that. So you're just taking a big leap of faith that, you know, like you literally have to start all over and, um, yeah, Jenny just, she called and said, this is her. I know, I know it, this is her. <laughs> and when she speaks like that, I just gotta listen. So, gotta listen. And, it, you know, of course, of course, I mean, it's, it's perfect. But uh, it was a, it was a long, hard process. We didn't mm -hmm. realize what we were just, what we were getting ourselves into, like the moment we said yes. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, you adopted Sylvie. She's in the Democratic Republic of Congo, mm -hmm. August of 2013. So she's your legal child, mm -hmm. but she's not with you. Mm -hmm. And there was a long time until she was with you. Yes. Explain that. I mean, that is a grueling yeah, process. It was horrible. Yeah. It was hard. It was horrible. Yeah, so we um, went through the whole process basically. There's a lot of paperwork, a lot of court hearings, a lot of just legal things. Um, and so she was legally our child. She had her U.S. visa. Um, she was ready to come home, essentially. And we went, that's when we first met her. We didn't meet her until we knew the adoption was final because we, everything is pretty... Um, fluid. Uh, yeah, fluid <laughs> in the Congo. So we were always nervous, like anything could fall through at any minute. And, um, and it did a lot for a lot of people, but it didn't. So she was legally ours, so we went and met her. And when we left, we left her um, and we, we knew we'd be back. We hoped we'd be back in like 
a month, maybe two months. Um, and then right about, I don't know, a couple weeks after we got home, I don't remember the exact timing, but they basically shut down all children leaving the country. Um, there were about 700 kids in process at the time. And in order to leave the country, you have to have one piece of paper, it's called an exit letter, and you had to get it from the government and they stopped assigning exit letters. And we found out, and we're like, I mean, it's just literally, I mean, there were a lot of families that had, that were visiting their kids to take them home. Oh. Like they were there on their last trip. We had one more step in our process to get to where we would bring her home. But we thought, you know, again, it wouldn't be maybe a month, but there were a lot of families that were there. They were coming home and they were, they were not allowed to leave. And it was, yeah, it was pretty, it was just horrible. It was devastating. And we got her, she was in a foster home. Um, we got her moved out of her orphanage, and so we knew she was somewhere safe, but actually I ended up getting pregnant um, <laughs> with Charlotte, which was a total surprise, because we had had so much trouble with the boys, and we didn't think we could get pregnant naturally, and then there's Charlotte. So that was a big surprise. So I couldn't go back to Congo um, to visit Sylv, and Dave went back a couple times and tried, I mean, we tried everything. We met with every, it Legal. was so frustrating yeah. because <laughs> you like, well, like as a dad going there, you, you know, you want to do everything in your power to bring your little, your little girl home. And you, we, w I, we could go as a family and move to Congo and she would live with us mm -hmm. um, as our daughter. Um, and if we got her out of the country, she was the, the U.S. government said, well, she's legally yours. Everything's been processed and done. But if we got caught taking her out of the country, we'd be arrested and charged with child trafficking. So we couldn't, like we were just stuck. Um, there was just like, the th like Jenny said, the things that we tried, the things. Um, well, we had like a letter uh, writing, like all of our friends and family wrote letters. Our Congressman, it was Congressman Womack and Senator Bozeman were super helpful. They were amazing actually. I met with them and their staff probably every week. Um, we went to DC and did like a thing on the Capitol Hill. Like we just did everything. We actually somehow got a connection with the Pope. I don't even, I mean like the craziest things and the Pope wrote a letter. Um, I got, it was, when I was in country, like um, I went to the US Embassy in Congo. You know all the movies where you're like, I'm an American, let me in. Yeah, you go straight It's not the that gate. way at all. No, it's, it's not. It's not, that way at all. yes. Um, you, you actually, it's really hard to even really get terrifying. into the US Embassy. Um, and but I went, went and waited there and tried to plead with them there and just nothing, nothing yeah. we did. Everything was just another roadblock and another, yeah. another no. So that ended up lasting for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, I want to go back to Sylvie getting a letter helping her from the Pope because that's really yeah. interesting <laughs> to me. But uh, life changed for you July 9th, 2014. And I'm paraphrasing yeah. a post that you put up every year <laughs> that I've seen multiple yes. years where you say 602 days of waiting, praying, pleading. Um, you post that image yeah. uh, every year yes. to mark that date. And yes. it is, it, you can't look at it and not <laughs> feel the emotion as yes. a mother and a father mm -hmm. looking on. I, I'm yeah. even just like, just thinking, <laughs> I can see you too. Yeah. Like, um, that moment, Sylvie's yeah. finally in your arms. Yes. I mean, I, it was a great moment. You take yeah. that great, from here. Great, great <laughs> moment. Um, I still get choked up about it because yeah, we didn't know, and Jenny, I think, tells it best. Like, we, we had kind of gotten to the point where we are like, okay, this is not meant to be. Um, we've gotten her into a, into a good foster home, so we just need to, you know, talk with Lore, who was her foster mom, about taking over care for her, and we would continue to you know, to pay for that care, but we were just kind of resigned to the fact that she wasn't going to come home. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think I just got to the point where I was like, you know, it was out of our control and yeah. God basically was like, okay, you know, this getting her home, you've been fighting. I mean, literally that's all I did 24 hours a day was mm -hmm. dealing with talking to people in Congo. I had so many people that were helping us, people here. I mean, that's, and I had a newborn too at the time and um, he basically just was like, you need to surrender this because she's become a, an idol in your life. And I know it's your child and you want her home, but you have to surrender yeah. and you have to trust me. And um, so we did. And we basically just said, she's our daughter. We're going to visit her as often as we can, but we're never going to 
likely, based on the situation, have her living here with us. Right. And so we had a conversation with her foster mom and had a plan in place for her to go to school and all the things. And um, it was it was horrible because we, I mean, she was our daughter, and it was, and it's hard to describe if you've not adopted like. In the process, it doesn't. It's hard because we'd only met her one time. We'd gotten to know her through photos and through FaceTime calls and all of that. But every, I mean, she's always on our mind. Every right. time I'd be in the grocery store, and I would think, did Sylvie? I wonder if Sylvie ate today. I've no, and I can't tell you how many times I had to leave the grocery store crying. It was always the grocery store. It was always <laughs> the hardest because I didn't know what she was eating. And um, so we basically just decided, let's let's make sure we set a plan up and let's just sur surrender control of this and. I don't know, a couple weeks later was when we got a call and um, Laura said she thinks she's heard rumblings that they're going to let a few kids go and then they're going to close again. And we were like, okay, we'll try. I mean, and at this point, I mean, there's been so many false hopes that she was coming home. So we didn't have, I didn't feel like, is this real? I don't know. So right. they ended up giving three kids a letter to leave. And Sylvie was one of them, yep. basically, because we had she had already had pre-approval of a medical visa a year before. So anyway, she was able to go. But again, we didn't really believe she was going to be able to go until she was on the plane and in the air. Because at any point, they could have just said, just pulled it, yeah. no, we can't let her go. And like even when she was on the plane, they, we were worried they would come in and take her off the plane. Like there's just, it's not a very safe place. It's not a very like trustworthy place, there's nothing, it's just a hard, hard place. And so um, we got the letter, we bought Laura, because so they gave Laura special permission to fly her home. And so Laura got on a plane the next day for the first time in her life, she'd never been on a plane, and she was taking a two and a half year old across the world <laughs> by herself. Bless her. I know. <laughs> That's a journey. I know, and then Laura got sick on her layover in Paris or wherever she, or no, Belgium. She was super sick. She didn't know if she'd be able to get on the next flight. And I was like, oh my gosh, they're in Belgium. So we're trying to, we're hurrying to try to figure out if we can get to Belgium. And But we had got her out of the country. Like as soon as she was out of the country and she touched down in Belgium, it was like relief. It just was always something. It felt like so many, like, it just always, like just so stressful. There was never anything that just happened smoothly and easily. It was just constant stress. So when they landed, it was like the biggest, I always say it was the biggest exhale. It was just literally like, oh my gosh, she really made it. And it was one of those things I don't think either of us really believed was happening until she was actually in our arms. Like, the, you know, I didn't think it would really, was and really happening. And then it was, it, like, that was the one thing that went smoothly. Like, and Jenny yeah. had prayed that just let her be asleep. Know, let her be, like, let me hold her. Because, you know, it's a new person. It's new. And she was, she was just sleeping and, and... When Laura passed her off yeah. uh, to Jenny, it was it was like, okay, we did it. Yes. It's, yes. We did it. Yes. So it's great. The, the way you said an exhale. Yes. Like we're all exhailing. Just like, listen to that oh, story. Just, yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to jump ahead a little bit now <laughs> mm -hmm. and talk about the li life over the last eight years. So okay. Luke was born in 2019, the same yes. year that Fixer and to Fabulous premiered. Mm -hmm. So that's a yes. lot going on. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but I wanted to share a quote from you. The main reason that we said yes to this HGTV journey of ours is for us to have a platform to share about adoption and orphan care, family preservation, the things that we're really passionate about. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And I want to talk about the challenges and surprises that you've had throughout that <laughs> moment that Sylvie got home throughout these few years. Mm -hmm. Talk about what what did you, what were you surprised by this journey? What, uh -huh. what did you expect? Oh gosh, so many things. Um, I think we, I think, well, because Sylvie was where she was for so long, I think we missed a lot of really key life development moments that we, we, we just, that was probably the hardest thing for us during the wait is knowing like we're missing all of this time, our first two and a half years of Life. And we went to another set of twins. Yeah, because I mean, Charlotte was a newborn. Charlotte was two months old, and Sylvie came home, and yeah. she's two and a half, but she doesn't know who these people are. She doesn't yeah. speak any of our language. She doesn't, I mean, everything was new to her. I mean, we. Yes. I, I'll never forget the first, like, night she came home. <laughs> we gave her a bath and mm -hmm. put her in the bathtub, and she was so scared because yeah. she'd never had a warm bath. Like, it was always just freezing cold water. Yeah. And, like... 
learning to like, okay, like every morning we got to check under a pillow because subconsciously she's just, she sees food, so she's hiding it. And she's not even doing it. She's just afraid she's going to starve again. Yeah. And so there was so much to like, to learn and, and go through and, yeah. and, and our boys, and then the infants and then our boys, our they, boys were only four. That's the thing that's even hard to yeah. remember now looking back, they were four and it was so hard on them. Yeah. They, it's so they, easy when you're praying for a picture of your sister or you're taking a picture beside your sister who isn't living there and destroying all your toys and, right. yeah. and going through, <laughs> you know, her same process of trying to figure out who these people are. And so our four year olds went from being the center of our life to now there's a newborn and our daughter had just come home. Yeah, so it was hard It was a train wreck. It was a train wreck for a long time. They had to be the helpers. Yeah. yeah, but they couldn't yeah. be. It, and yeah. that was hard for them because it was like their world just got turned upside down. And um, yeah, I don't know, it was really hard. It was really hard because then also like, yeah, it was, just, it was just a lot, it was a lot. It was a hard <laughs> season. I call it, I mean, it was a beautiful summer. It was the best summer. It was all these amazing answered prayers, but I call it the dark summer because it was just really dark in our house. It was very heavy. Um, we couldn't have friends over. We couldn't see anyone, of course, because we were trying to like commu create this bond with Sylvie and making sure she knew we were her people because she would just go to anyone. I mean, she just would see anyone and walk off with them. And, um, so we were trying to do that. And so we just felt like, oh my gosh, what in the world did we do to our family? We just ruined our family. Our poor boys, they're going to grow up and like, they're not going <laughs> to, I don't even know. Like it was just, it was so hard. Um, but then tons of therapy and healing. And I mean, it's still, we're still always, there's so many scars process. that everybody has from all of that process, but so many good things have come out of it. And like, I just think the the first time we probably both felt like okay we're gonna we we're gonna be okay as a family and it's gonna be good, it's good long term, um, was when we went to South Africa as a family. Um, we were going to visit our work there in Zimbabwe and we were there. We went to a, um, an orphan not even an orphanage it was like yeah, a kind of daycare center with a lot of orphans but then also local kids and their moms worked and they came to the center, and it was through our partners at Help One Now. And it was a very great facility. Like the kids were really well cared for, nothing like where Sylvie had been. But it was the first time Sylvie had been back to a place where there was a bunch of kids that looked like her. She had never been to a place like that since she had come home. And it was, we had worked a lot to prepare for that moment because I knew it would be really hard on her. And so we went and the boys went in, they had fun, they were playing with the kids. Charlotte did great and Sylvie and I stayed, she tried to come in and she freaked out and I, I took her outside and we went outside and it took us probably two hours to get her to go inside. And she went in and she ended up playing with this one caretaker who she just sort of gravitated to. And she, she was like, I was right there, but she kind of was like looking at me like, what's gonna happen? And so then when it was time for us to go, I saw her eyes, I could see what was happening. And I was like, remember babe, we're going together. Remember I told you we're all gonna leave together. We're not, we're all together as a family. We're, we're leaving together. And she was like, looking like very questioning. Like, are you sure? Is this really what's happening? And so when we left, it was almost like she realized, oh, okay, these are, this is my family. They're not like, I, you could tell she was still trying to figure out, are we dropping her off here basically? Um, and that night, was when the boys, and the boys were only six at the time, they were still little, and they, that was the first time they prayed for their sister since she had been home. And like they say their nightly prayers and they had always just prayed for everything, all the things, but they never said Sylvie's name because it was just, they had a really hard relationship for those first couple years. And that night after that visit, they prayed for her. And like just saying, thank you God for Charlotte, thank you for Sylvie, like they didn't say anything, but it was just like their, sh their mentality had just shifted. Like they saw a little glimpse of what Sylvia's life had been before, which we had talked a lot about, but it was different when you're there and you see yeah. it and you understand like, oh, okay, okay, I get this now. And ever since that trip, it just basically, the, the dynamic between the three of them really did change yeah. in a really good way. And it felt like, okay, we're, it's gonna be good. <laughs> we're, we're gonna, gonna, make, it. We're we're gonna make it, we're gonna survive. <laughs> <laughs> There's, you talk about tough moments, but I know there has to have been so much mm -hmm. joy. Yes. And I want to convey that and help you, have you encourage families mm -hmm. that might be considering adoption? Mm -hmm. What are your words to them? Mm. I mean, I think there is, there's so, there's so many moments that you think, I mean, we had a, 
I always say we had a front row seat to watching redemption happen. Like yeah. that's that's pretty incredible and like a true, like it, I look back on on the stories you know that happened. There were so many little stories of mir miraculous things that God was saying like, look, this I'm I'm in this. I'm doing this. And so for us, it's sort of like a a benchmark for our family. Like we we know God in a way that we wouldn't have known him before adoption or before even even stuff with our boys because our boys were, were born early and were really sick. So all these things, like these hard things, we, we got to know him more and his yeah. heart more. And so for us, I think that's been really, really amazing. And then also just for our kids, like they, they just have a, I mean, they, I don't know, they look out for each other and they welcome people that they don't even, I don't know, they don't even realize that they don't look alike. I know they do. They don't realize like, they just, they're so more, oh, they're so much more open and welcoming to everyone. Like whenever we travel or whenever we have, I and mean, when we have our friends from Zimbabwe that come to visit us or we go there or we go to anywhere and they're so open to new people and cultures and things that are so different and they're not scared of it. They're just like, this is just, this is what we do as a family, yeah. um, which I think is really good. Like they just, I don't know. And hopefully. I think like, like, Part of why we said yes to the show was like that our family doesn't look like mm -hmm. your normal family and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Like we still like we have our problems, we have our ups and our downs, but we all love each other. And I mean, I don't know what would have happened to Sylvie if we hadn't, you know, adopted her, but mm -hmm. I know she's got a big story and she's got mm -hmm. a lot left to live. Mm -hmm. And she like her story is just starting to be told and she's gone through so much already. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think like anyone that is thinking about, you know, that is thinking about adoption, that is thinking about that, that path, like, you know, there, there's the next Einstein is out there, the next <laughs> like great composer, the next like they're there and they just need loving parents that, you know, pour into them. Mm. And um, I don't know, I just, I know Sylvie's gonna do big things. I know she is. And um, yeah, I'm excited to see what it is, yeah. <laughs> Dave and Jenny, thank you so uh, much. Thank yeah, you. Sharing your thank story you. and thank nice you. to finally get to sit down with you. Yes, Absolutely. thanks. Appreciate you. Thanks to Dave and Jenny Mars for your generous time and for sharing your story with us. Of course, you can catch Dave and Jenny on season four of Fixer to Fabulous on HGTV. To learn more about the Deb Project and their work to be a complete support network for the foster care community and school social workers, please visit debproject.com. That's it for this episode of Downtown Now. We'll see you next time in downtown.